Hello and welcome to the MOOC on optical communications. In this module we will discuss nonlinear effects, self phase modulation and cross phase modulation with a little bit of a uh, discussion on four wave mixing all using nonlinear Schrodinger equation. We have already seen nonlinear Schrodinger equation and we have studied that for the case of no nonlinearity but only dispersion. We have seen that the equation predicts that the pulse spreads out and the pulse spreading is controlled by the amount of beta 2. A small correction the sign of beta 2 or rather the sign of uh, the uh, exponential term that you are going to multiply was taken incorrectly in the previous module because of after the Fourier transformation we got a minus sign I forgot to put the minus sign. So, the correct expression the phase term that you are going to multiply to propagate the spec spectrum is given by e power minus j omega square beta 2 z by 2. Okay. So, please note this change I will also announce this change in the course website. Now, coming back to self phase modulation what we now assume is that initially beta 2 equal to 0 that is we consider a fiber where there is no dispersion. Okay. So, this means that we are considering no dispersion and in contrast to what would happen when the optical power is very low right the pulse actually undergoes a change when it propagates through the fiber because of the nonlinear effect. So, let us see what actually happens with beta 2 equal to 0 my nonlinear Schrodinger equation becomes j del a by del z is equal to gamma magnitude of a of z t square a of z and t. Okay. Now, I can as previously I can multiply by minus j on both sides and then push the j on to the right hand side and this is the equation that I get. Now, this equation can be formally integrated Okay. This equation can be formally integrated to obtain a of z t equals a of 0 t e to the power minus j gamma magnitude of a of 0 t square times z. But remember we have chosen the units of a of a the pulse envelope in such a way that this is supposed to be the optical power. So, this is the optical power at z equal to 0 which is now describing how the phase term is changing. right? So, you now have a of 0 t times e power minus j gamma p 0 of t times z. Now, this is a very important thing. Okay. You have now considered the propagation of the pulse through the fiber and what you have ended up is with a multiplying is a complex phase factor e to the power minus j into gamma p of 0 t into z. Now, you know that in general the envelope function at any particular z of t also must be multiplied by the appropriate carrier phase term or the carrier term. right? So, you will have to multiply this a of z t by e to the power j omega s t. You can have a beta 0 of omega s into z if you like, but this is a simple phase factor. So, it is not going to be important, but in addition to this omega s t right you will also have some phase phi of t that is how we normally picture right. So, your your cosine carrier will have omega s or a frequency as well as a certain phase right. Even if you assume that this phase factor is 0 now because of this e to the power minus j gamma something you actually end up having a certain phase term right. So, you now get minus gamma p 0 of t into z. If you fix this at z equal to l that is at the fiber output the envelope will be a of 0 t because you are looking at the envelope at z equal to z. So, this has to be multiplied to this phase factor. So, if you look at the uh, fiber output this would be a of 0 t e to the power j omega s t minus gamma p 0 of t into l. So, you have a certain phase factor here and you know that the relationship between the instantaneous frequency and the phase factor the instantaneous frequency and the phase are related by the derivative of the phase being equal to the frequency. This is how we define the frequency in fact if phi of t happens to be omega s into t which means that there is a linear phase change then d phi by d t will give you omega s which is exactly the phase that you are looking at. Okay. So, the instantaneous frequency that you obtain is given by 
this d phi by dt whether there is a minus sign or a plus sign does not matter it, it just has to be consistent or it has to be taken in such a way that if this is a phase then it has to give rise to a phase factor I mean it has to give rise to an instantaneous uh, frequency change right. So, what is the phase that I am looking at? The phase term is coming from this gamma p0 of t into L and it is very important to note that this phase is dependent on the pulse power p of t correct it is actually dependent on the pulse power ok. So, if the power is fluctuating the phase will also be fluctuating and if the power fluctuating in the sense of power changing with respect to time the phase will also change with respect to time and this change of phase with respect to time is called as chirping ok. Phase of change with respect to time is called as chirping which is something that if you have studied radars you know it very well ok. You have a chirped pulse ok. So, if this is your phase then the frequency is given by d phi by dt this is omega is equal to plus d phi by dt because to be consistent with this formulation of phi equal to omega st we take the positive derivative of phi. So, you just have to take this one, but I know that the phase which I am considering is minus gamma p of t into L. So, I can consider what would happen to the instantaneous frequency. Please note that this instantaneous frequency will be given actually by d by dt of omega st minus gamma p of t into L. I have just dropped the subscript of 0 there. So, this will be given by omega s minus gamma, gamma we will assume it to be constant, L also we will assume to be constant right because we are looking at the output of the fiber. What is changing is this d p by d t. In case you have a continuous wave signal then p of t will not be changing, it will be constant then the frequency will not change. However, there will be a constant phase shift right. The constant phase shift will be whatever the continuous wave power p c w that you use times L this constant phase shift which happens for the continuous wave signals is called as the self phase modulation right. This makes sense now because p of c w is coming from the very own pulse. So, it is like I am traveling and depending on what is my power the phase of my own signal is changing that is why this is called a self phase modulation. In case this power is changing you know like p of t is changing with respect to time which would happen for a pulse then the frequency change will be given by gamma l d p of t by d t ok. For example, if this is your Gaussian pulse approximated by a rectangular pulse if this is how pulse p of t is changing what would be its d p by d t it would be a positive and a negative pulse change right. So, the frequency here will be whatever the original frequency omega is minus gamma l into this value the slope of this particular equation. So, if this is changing over a time period t then this would be given by gamma l and if there is a peak value of p 0 or rather not p 0 let us say simply the peak value of p then this peak value times divided by t by 2 will be the slope right. So, you will actually see that the frequency has now expanded from an original omega s to omega s minus gamma l p of or p by t by 2 and if you change p or if you change t by 2 this particular frequency will also change. So, which means that self phase modulation has given rise to new frequencies which were not present in the original pulse. In the original pulse spectrum you had an omega s and you had certain bandwidth associated with the pulse. Now, because of this chirping what you have done is to increase the frequency spectrum or you have to change the frequency spectrum. Okay. This is very important in contrast to the dispersion case where there was no nonlinearity but only dispersion what happened was the pulse only spread in time there was no corresponding change in the frequency spectrum correct there was no corresponding change in the frequency spectrum whereas in the self phase modulation there is a change in the frequency spectrum but if you go back to the equation a of z t you see that the magnitude of a of z t is the same as a of 0 t which means that in time domain the pulse has not really changed. It is something that you do not really expect you always expect that if things change in frequency you get a similar change in time. 
but that is valid for linear systems. This is not really a linear system per se. Therefore, that thing uh, and when it is when when chirping is there, it is not really valid in that way. Okay. So, there is change in the frequency spectrum, the spectrum usually broadens in the case of a self phase modulation, but there is no corresponding change in the pulse shape. This is of course, to the first effect because we have assumed this dispersion to be 0, but the moment you include dispersion that changed spectrum will increase delta lambda and if delta lambda increases d into delta lambda into L will start to increase and this increase of d into delta lambda into L will contribute to a pulse spreading. right? So, eventually what happens is that the pulse spreads both in time as well as in frequency reaching a equilibrium between the two. Okay. We will come to that one shortly, but for now depending on whatever the power fluctuations with respect to time that you get, the derivative of the power with respect to that power fluctuation will be the amount of pulse spreading that you are going to get. The extra bandwidth that you are getting or extra pulse uh, spectral width that you are getting is simply proportional to this d p of t by d t and it is also proportional to length l. Right. It is also proportional to the length of the fiber. The larger the fiber length, the larger will be the pulse spreading. Okay. In fact, this SPM pulse frequency spectral changes is quite utilized, the chirping part is utilized for pulse compression. Okay. It is a very common technique to use self phase modulation for implementing pulse compression uh, to compress the pulses. Uh, something that we are not going to study here. Of course, only SPM cannot do the pulse compression, it has to be also included with a different kind of an effect, which is dispersion also has to be there, but the dispersion has to be slightly different than what we have considered. So, we will not look at the pulse compression, but that is one of the applications of self phase modulation. So, it is a good application rather than a bad thing that you have to consider. Now, what is the pulse spreading. So, when will be the instantaneous frequency be maximum? The instantaneous frequency or the frequency that you get the change will be maximum at the point where this d p of t by d t is going through its maximum. Correct. So, you can actually verify for the case of a Gaussian pulse, what would be the derivative of this Gaussian pulse? The derivative of this Gaussian pulse is initially the spectral is changing like this right a job. So, let me try this again. So, there is a certain turning point. So, in this central region there is a constant increase and what we say is that the pulse has been up chirped. Okay. It is a linear up chirp, almost linear up chirp and once the slope starts to go down there would be drop in the instantaneous frequency and at the tails there is no change. So, this is of course, with respect to time, this is of course, with respect to time, this is the pulse power p of t, this is d p by d t. Now, at this point you can actually differentiate a Gaussian and then find out what would be the corresponding point here where it becomes maximum and therefore, correspondingly find out what is the pulse broadening that is because of the SPM which is proportional to gamma L d p by d t what is the maximum value of this because that would be the maximum frequency change that you are going to get. right? So, you can calculate all this for the simple Gaussian pulses or another pulse whose analytical information you are able to extract. But the point is at this point you know in time where d p by d t is large there is a corresponding change in the frequency spectrum. So, if you look at how the frequency spectrum of the Gaussian pulse would look like when it is subjected to self phase modulation you would be surprised to see that it actually goes something like this. The number of peaks that you are going to get depend on the maximum phase shift. And what is the maximum phase shift? Gamma p of t into l the maximum value of this. So, if you were to fix gamma and l you are looking at what is the maximum power or the peak power and that peak power will decide what would be the maximum nonlinear phase shift. Okay? And you see this deep modulations because you see this deep modulations there is reason of well, this one is little complicated. So, we are not going to discuss that one over here and it has to actually do with the fact that the frequency is changing and there are certain times intervals where each particular frequency. So, this is the spectrum. Okay? So, at each frequency you actually get contribution from the pulse at two different times. Okay? The phase shift will be at two different times and this time difference keeps on changing as the frequency offset keeps on increasing from omega s eventually resulting in a interference. So, if the phase change happens to be pi 
then there will be a corresponding uh, null in the frequency spectrum something that we are not going to do over here, but it is important to see that or just to note that the number of peaks here depend on the maximum phase shift. In fact, one can relate the number of peaks to the maximum phase shift which is because of the SPM divided by pi plus 1. This is an approximate equation. The number of minima in the pulse is given by phi max by pi, okay. again an approximate relationship. So, this is all about the self phase modulation but what is its impact on communication systems? I mean why am I considering self-phase modulation for communication systems? Let us consider the simplest case of a BPSK constellation. With the BPSK constellation you transmit bits 1 and 0 in the form of these two optical powers. right? So, this is in the amplitude domain that I am drawing. So, you are transmitting a bit 1 and a bit 0 here. This is the constellation for a binary phase shift keying system. Now, because of the SPM assuming that you are looking at continuous wave input, you are not doing any pulse shaping in the optical domain, there will be a corresponding SPM induced nonlinear phase shift. What would be the amount of this SPM induced nonlinear phase shift? That would be given by gamma p peak into L, right. So, if you fix the fiber length L, then this would be the nonlinear rotation. What it means is that instead of the constellation being received here, you know this is the transmit constellation, the received constellation will actually rotate. So, the received constellation, I am assuming that the rotation is considered you know in the counterclockwise direction. So, this would have rotated in this way because we are assuming gamma p peak into L is a positive quantity. So, the phase shift has meant or if, if it is negative it will rotate in the other direction it does not really matter. But there is a rotation and you will actually get to a new value of phase. Okay? By itself this might not have been a problem instead of taking the decision regions to be this particular fellow, you can now take the decision region to be something that is rotated as well. Okay. So, this would be the decision region that you can take instead of taking the original decision region here. You can always rotate the decision regions, but SPM by itself although contributes to a phase shift does not really act alone, okay. especially in long haul communication systems where you have fiber followed by an amplifier, fiber followed by an amplifier fiber followed by an amplifier and so on. Let us assume that the number of amplifiers are n a amplifiers in the total length from the transmitter to the receiver side. If you start with an input signal E s which would be say BPSK modulated, after the first amplifier what you get is E s plus n 1 where n 1 is the noise that is introduced or the random variable that represents the noise that is introduced by the first amplifier. Now, this propagates propagates right. Now, what would be the nonlinear term that you are going to get because of this? The nonlinear phase shift will be in this span E s plus n 1 magnitude square right. It would be proportional to this fellow because amplitude square times gamma l will be the nonlinear phase shift. So, you start with the uh, signal E s here and you your E s let us say is quite small. So, you are not going to get a large amount of nonlinearity let us say, but what would so, if you want you can also include the initial nonlinear effect E s square. Okay. This would correspond to the fixed or a constant phase shift that you are going to get. Okay. So, this would be the initial nonlinear phase shift, but then once the amplifier this is the amplifier A, once the amplifier which has a certain amount of gain G adds a noise component N 1, right? the nonlinear phase shift will become E s plus N 1 magnitude square. Now, this electric field will propagate at the output of the second amplifier. So, this is the second amplifier your total field will be E s plus n 1 plus n 2. right? Why is this E s plus n 1 and there is no loss? Because the second amplifier will compensate for all the losses in the first span. So, if E s is dropping in terms of its amplitude n 1 is also dropping in terms of amplitude, but both E s and n 1 are restored to their original values because of the amplifier gain in the second term. So, you can see that finally, at the output of the last amplifier which is the number n a your total field will be E s plus n 1 plus n 2 all the way up to n times n a and the corresponding nonlinear terms will only start adding the total nonlinear shift will be E s plus n 1 plus n 2 magnitude square plus and so on until you get to the last term E s plus n 1 plus n 2 up to n of n a magnitude square. To this you can also add 
Es magnitude square. If you multiply this entire thing by gamma into L, right, that you are going to get at where L is actually the length of one span, okay, length of one span over, or not length of one span, the entire length. So, you have to also be little careful in multiplying this one by the appropriate lengths, okay. So, if you multiply and get this gamma, so what actually happens is that instead of talking about the physical length, you will get to the effective length that we discussed in the earlier module, right. So, you will actually have to multiply by the effective length to get to the total nonlinear phase shift. So, you see that if SPM by itself was present, it would probably have not been a big deal, okay, in the lower constellation formats, because all it is going to do is to rotate the constellation and you can also rotate your diffusion regions appropriately. If it is if the, if the nonlinear phase shift is very large, then the rotation would cause the constellation to flip and then that would be a problem for us. And this would be a problem if you go to QPSK or 16 QAM constellations, where the constellation points are pretty closely spaced. So, you do not want to allow too much of nonlinearity there. But nonlinearity such as SPM by itself is not a big problem, at least not something that one cannot completely take care of. What is a big problem is this nonlinear term the phase shift which is originating because of the signal and the noise that is SPM effect uh, which is the result of both signal and noise added together right. This interaction of the SPM with respect to the amp uh, with uh, uh, interaction of noise with respect to the or with the optical amplifiers giving rise to an SPM uh, effect the nonlinear effect becomes statistical because N1, N2, N3 are all the random variables which one can assume to be 0 mean, okay, but have a certain variance. What is the variance of n at any stage of the noise variation that would be given by NSP or 2 NSP g minus 1 into h nu, where g is the gain of the amplifier, h nu is whatever the photon energy, NSP is the spontaneous emission factor multiplied by the optical bandwidth B opt. Okay. So, this would be the variance of this fellow. So, the variance of this is sigma square is 2 NSP g minus 1 h nu into B opt. This is a random variable, right? which means that the field here becomes random. This is a random field, this is a random field. Granted, there is a signal component here. So, these are all the signal components. However, in addition to this signal component, you also get little bit of non, you know, uh, randomness. So, the constellation actually looks like this. So, this is for a simple BPSK constellation. The original constellation would be this fellow. Okay. Now, because of this nonlinearity, your new constellation would look like this. Because of the SPM interacting with ASC, your new constellation would look like this. So, there is a spreading, there is a shifting, there is a rotation, all these things are happening. And if the nonlinearity is pretty large, then there would be a shift in the constellation like this. Okay. I am drawing this way, but uh, depending on what the constellation is, it would actually start shifting. So, this kind of an effect, something like this within this region, you are going to get the nonlinearity. This kind of an effect, which is happening because of SPM interacting with the amplified spontaneous emission noise is something that is very damaging to optical communication systems and there have been a lot of study on how to estimate this nonlinear phase noise and to compensate for this nonlinear phase noise. One very common technique that people have used is to actually use a Kalman filter. Okay. There are other techniques to estimate nonlinear phase noise. This is something that I am familiar with. So, if you want more details on how to use Kalman filter for estimating the nonlinear phase noise, which is occurring because of the SPM interaction with the amplified ASC noise, you can actually look at this particular paper. Okay. So, here both nonlinear phase noise as well as the phase noise of the laser itself are shown how to, so are, are treated as to how to uh, use Kalman filters to track both phase noise as well as a nonlinear phase noise. So, this is in 2016 IEEE COM letters. So, you can look at this paper for a large amount of detail on con Kalman filter using Kalman filter how to obtain the or how to estimate the nonlinear phase noise and how to correct it. Okay. So, this is all what we are going to talk about the SPM effect. I will very briefly mention XPM. FWM is not 
really something that I can treat in this particular small module time. But the basic idea is that instead of having only one wave propagating and interacting with the nonlinear fiber or the fiber nonlinearity, you now have three or more waves interacting and provided there is a good phase matching, you can uh, then see that four wave mixing products are getting formed. The way to treat four wave mixing in the nonlinear Schrodinger equation paradigm would be to assume that the total field or that amplitude A of Zt can be written as A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4, where A1, A2 are the pump signals, A3 is the signal itself and A4 is the resultant four way mixed product. If this is at a frequency omega 1, this is at omega 2, omega 3 and omega 4, then you will actually get a large number of terms because you are going to look at terms with omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 and omega 4. So, you will actually have e to the power j omega i t i is equal to 1 to 4 magnitude square for the nonlinear term correct. So, you will see that there will be a lot of terms that are generated, but amongst these terms you have to pick particularly those terms which, which satisfy the phase matching and when you do that one you are going to get FWM. How do I treat XPM the cross phase modulation? Well, I can treat cross phase modulation by actually writing A of Zt as A1 which is just two waves plus A2 of Zt. Now, you can substitute this into the original uh, into the nonlinear Schrodinger equation and you get a term which would be 2 gamma L A2 magnitude square. You will also get 2 gamma L A1 magnitude square, but this fellow will be multiplied by A1 which means that in addition to the self phase modulation effect gamma L A1 magnitude square, you are also going to get this term which is now depends on the power of the second component which is propagating right. A2 square is the power of the other component which is propagating through the fiber. So, the power of the second wave will be talking or resulting in the phase changes of this present wave A1 ok. This I will leave it as a small exercise for you to show that it is indeed what is happening ok. And there is a factor of 2 here compared to the factor of 1. So, it means that the cross phase modulation whenever it happens is a much stronger effect than the self phase modulation. And this 2 comes because there is a interference of the two waves A1 and A2 ok and interference effect is much stronger than the self phase modulation effect ok. And where is cross phase modulation important in communication systems? Well, cross phase modulation is very important because all optical communication systems are WDM based right. So, you have multiple optical waves propagating at different channels and each of these channels can in turn talk to each other resulting in cross phase modulation. The cross phase modulation will be stronger for those channels which are closer to each other. These are called as adjacent channels and these adjacent channels interfere with each other and change the phase. But in and uh, this XPM mitigation has been a major uh, study over the last few years 3 to 4 years especially in very high bit rate optical communication systems and a multiple channel scenario. So, you are looking at what is the overall phase change which would again be random because it is not just this A1 A2 square as it propagates through the fiber A2 must be replaced by A2 plus N1, A2 plus N1 plus N2 and so on. So, there is a statistical term or the random term coming into XPM as well ok. So, these effects are very well captured by nonlinear Schrodinger equation. I wish I had more time to talk to you about this, but this is something that one can talk about it in a different and advanced course. Thank you very much. Thank you.